we will be talking about sulfonamides. They are functioning like metabolite inhibitor. An example for these antibiotics are sulfadiazone, sulfamethoxazole, and sulfatiazole. The most important property of these antibiotics is that they do not affect the human cells. The way of metabolite inhibitor that we are talking about is that they block the convulsion of PABA. These drugs are bacteriostatic in nature. That means that they will halt the bacterial growth, but it won't kill the bacteria. And it also they are only active against gram-positive bacteria. And another factor is that as these are bacteriostatic, most of the time they are just formulated to use them alongside with other bactericidal antibiotics. Usually, we use them as combinatorial treatment. It is taken to go, to go against UTI or urinary tract infection with combinatorial therapy usually given with trimetrophine. In this combination of sulfonamides and trimetrophine, we call them as Bactrim. In other cases, we can combine sulfonamides with erythromycin and in this combination is also termed as pegazole. Pegazole is used to treat otitis media, which is a common disorder in the central nervous system of the children or infants. Combinatory therapy of sulfonamides with trimetrophin and erythromycin are for the treatment of bronchitis, to treat gonorrhea, a treatment of different ear infection, and so on. The side effects of this and so on, the side effect for this kind of sulfonamide is dangerous. Side effects include hemolytic anemia, a toxic nephro nephrosis. Another side effects are nausea, diarrhea, headache, and dermatitis. Now, another topic that we are going to talk about is about the quinolones. Quinolones, its mode of action is DNA or RNA synthesis inhibition. The examples of these antibiotics are ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, ofloxacin, and norfloxacin. Usually taken to go against gram-negative bacteria like Enterobacter, E. coli, and also for UTI. But they can also go against some gram-positive bacteria. They combine with calcium and magnesium as they combine to them the effect of this antibiotic will decrease so you must not take it with other drugs that contains calcium or magnesium antacids. For example, we can usually use this for respiratory tract infections and bone or joint infections. We can also use it for diarrhea, UTI, and skin infections. Another important thing is that fluoroquinolones doesn't damage the human DNA. The side effects are the following. Headache, fatigue, nausea, constipation, fever, chills, rush, vomiting, and diarrhea. Our last topic for today is about trimetrophim. Trimetoxybenzyl pyrimidine selectively inhibits bacterial dihydrofolic acid reductase, which converts dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid trimetrophim, is a much less efficient inhibitor of mammalian dihydrofolic acid reductase trimetrophim in combination with the sulfonamides block sequential steps in folate synthesis. Resulting in marked enhancement of the activity of both drugs, the combination often is bactericidal compared with the bacteriostatic activity of a sulfonamide alone resistance to trimetrophim can result from reduced cell permeability, overproduction of dihydrofolate reductase, 
or production of an altered reductase with reduced drug binding. It is usually given alone or in combination with sulfamethoxazole and mainly excreted in urine. It is also more on antibacterial activity in prostatic and vaginal fluids. The clinical use of these drugs are for oral, oral trimetrophim, oral trimetrophim with a combination of sulfamethoxazole. Another one is the intravenous trimetrophim sulfamethoxazole. And the last but not the least is for oral pyrimetamine with sulfonamide. The adverse effects of these drugs are the following. It can also lead to megaloblastic anemia, leukopenia, the granulocytopenia, and can be prevented by folinic acid. Patients with AIDS and pneumocystis pneumonia have a particularly high frequency of untoward reactions to trimetrophim sulfamethoxazole.